Hey, what's going on beautiful jellyfish? It's Tracy and today I'm going to be doing a new video idea that I came up with um, that I thought would be pretty cool to do kind of like an each year like type of situation um, where I do like my top cards of the year. Um, but before I want to like jump into this, I do want to say these aren't really like, none of these are like new cards to me. Like they're not really cards that like I discovered in 2017 because to be completely honest, I haven't edited like my ADH decks in I don't even know when the last time I like bought cards for magic to like put into an EDH deck which I think I'm gonna do some EDH updates because I need to talk about stuff so um but yeah these aren't like new cards or anything like that um these are just cards that I thought were really sweet and yeah I mean some of them I've definitely talked about these before but I did want to do a video talking about them um so team so I'm sorry I've I've tried to start this like three times at this point and this has been a super rough time. I just want to talk about these magic cards. Um, okay, so the first card I want to talk to you guys about is pretty much no surprise I would say to people who've been following my channel and also for people who play magic with me and know that this is one of my signature cards um, that is Dem Protector. I love this card. Um, I find myself just running it in a bunch of things. In terms of my EDH decks, I run this in Tassiger and I also run it in Ladies. And I've said this before, but I try not to repeat cards frequently in my decks. And I'm not talking like basic cards like Soul Ring. Soul Ring I run in any deck to the end of time. Like that's just a given. I'm talking about like different cards. I try not to run creatures, enchantments, you know, that aren't like removal, like creatures and stuff. I try not to overlap them if that makes sense. But Den Protector is a card that I do run in both because it's just so good and I love it. It's two mana, um, but you can um, cast it for three and then Megamorph it for two. So you're paying five mana for it, but then it comes in with um, an additional plus on plus encounter it so that the three two and with creature's power with it um, can't block it. I always feel like I forget about that ability because the most relevant ability is that when it's turned face up, you return target card from your um, hand to your graveyard. So this is just perfect in so many different decks. Even if you're not doing like hardcore like graveyard recursion or anything like that, I just really love this card. Um, and this is just definitely one of my all. Sorry if that camera angle just changed, guys. I'm I'm really struggling with filming this video today. I don't know what's happening, and I'm I'm working with a new camera right now, and everything's like so different, and I'm just trying. Okay. The second card I want to talk about is one of my favorite board wipes, and that is Perilous Vault. Um, I love this card for a really long time and I always feel like what's so great about this card is you can run it in all different decks. So if you're running a deck that doesn't really have a lot of board wipes or like black, like there's a lot of really expensive black board, like Damnation is like 20 bucks. Like some people just don't want to spend that on a card, which I totally understand. Um, and Perilous Vault's a really great alternative. Yes, it does exile and it does exile your stuff as well, but like sometimes you're in such desperate situations where you just need to play this. Also too, um, I know uh, like Ugin is like a really popular magic card. A lot of people really like this and again it's artifacts and it's flexible and it does other things other than remove things from the game. Colored permanence which is awesome but this is a much cheaper alternative and um, Ugin you can kind of like keep bringing back and you know whatever. I'm, I'm just not a fan of that card. That's in like one of my cards that I like loathe. Um, I just hate that card. It will like never, eh, that's, eh, maybe I'd run it. I don't know. I haven't decided. But Perilous Vault continues to be one of my favorite board wipes. Um, guess it does exile with it, with all the things that you get rid of. But honestly, if you get rid of like a huge board, especially in like games where they have indestructible or they bring things back or things like that, this card's a really great alternative and it's very inexpensive cost wise. It is a little bit mana wise, but it's also colorless. So, you know, why not? Okay. The next card, um, I just talked about this card in my Badass Ladies video actually, which I just posted on Tuesday, but that is Mystic Snake. Um, I'm not really going to talk that much about it because I did just talk about it there, but I love this card. I've talked about this card like before. Um, huge fan of it. I love that it's a creature and I love that it's a counter spell. I love that it counters any spell. Love that you're left with a 2-2 afterwards. It's also got flash. Sometimes you just need to like flash that in and not even counter anything because you just need a blocker. like. You know, card's awesome. We'll continue to love this card till the end of time, basically. Okay, the next card. Um, have I really talked about this card that much? I don't actually know if I really talked about Eldrazi one you before, but I am in love. I like when I was building my my ladies, my five color deck. I was like, okay. Well, I want some sort of like indestructibility. Like I want something that does that because that would just be really sweet. Came across the Drowsy Monument and I was like, hey, like this card's awesome. The downside is you have to sack something. However, 
What's really awesome about this card is if you're doing, like, for me, I have, like, tokens. I have Silver Queen. Like, she's pretty... It, I don't want to say she's pretty easy to cast because like she's one of each color but I have a lot of ramp and things like that and um, if when I do have her out I can just make a token and sacrifice it which is just awesome and that's what I do so much of the time you know I, I, I'll I won't really do Eldrazi Monument unless I've uh, I won't like tutor for it or something like that or I won't really play it unless I have Silver Queen secured and I have tokens that I know I can sack those because I don't want my Eldrazi Monument to be sacked because I don't have that much recursion. But you know your things got plus one plus one flying and indestructible. This is just one of my all-time favorite artifacts. Like I forever love this card. Um, it's definitely not a card I would run in every different every deck but it's also really good in decks that you want cards to go to your graveyard as well because if you don't mind sacrificing things or when they die you have some sort of ability this card's really amazing um the indestructibility of the plus one plus one it's just great and i mean for honestly sacrificing one creature like that's the downside it doesn't have to be a downside if you have things that you want to go in your graveyard so huge fan of this card um love it definitely a huge huge staple card for me i would say in my um five color deck um this next card i run in tassiger and um I feel like this was a card that I, I ran and then I, I realized just how like powerful of a card this is. It's Temporal Trespass. Did I say that? I don't remember. Um, but this card is incredible. Um, it does look like a lot of mana and it is a lot of mana. If you have Delve, I mean casting it for three is really great. But to be honest, I've totally hard cast this card before when I've had like I just need the extra turn to like swing in for those points of damage. It's it's happened before, true story. So you hard cast it, um, and you take an extra turn after this one, and you do have to exile temporal trespass. But guys, honestly, it's so good. I know there are a lot of take extra turn cards. I like that's definitely a thing. But what I really like about this card is that it has delve. So sometimes when I the assumption when I cast this card in my Tassiger deck is that I've pretty much taken an extra turn and I'm going to win. That's kind of the assumption. But say like I don't. Um, I've delved away a ton of cards that I don't need in my um, in my graveyard, which is a really great advantage. And um, I just get an extra turn to swing with points of damage or draw an answer or whatever it is that I'm trying to do. So I'm a huge fan of this card. Um, really really works well in any sort of like delve strategy um you know i would definitely say it works better in things where you have stuff in your graveyard and you want to remove it um just because sometimes you just don't have mana to like hard cast this for like 11 sometimes it's just way too much mana so but i do really enjoy this card and the art is beautiful um okay um the next card i want to talk about is sorry if i'm like going i'm really cold right now it's my door is shut and it's like zero degrees here it's freezing um uh that is karmic guide and again i i mentioned earlier how i try not to do repeated cards frequently but i run karmic guide in um ladies and i also run it in angels and um i just really love this card i love cards like this i love cards that like do something but then leave me with a creature like that it, this like this and mystic snake remind me of each other if that like makes any sense at all i know they do different things but it's the fact that it's like it does something and then i get a creature out of it like i love that that's to me like yes yes please um so it's five mana for a 2-2 two -two flying and it's got pearl black and it has echo um adtb is you return to your creature from your graveyard to the battlefield like guys what if you like I don't know there's like a 10 10 like something in your graveyard and you just bought that back for like five mana and if you don't pay the echo cost honestly like at that point you're, you're losing out on a 2-2 flying pearl black which sometimes can be really great but if you're not you're like okay sweet i just brought back this super awesome creature like this card is awesome i love karma guide oh no go back go back okay um, and then we have Restoration Angel, which, what do I run this card in? Do I run this in ladies? Yes, I do run at least. At first I was like, what? I mean, I basically, in any modern build that I do, I will run a Restoration Angel because like, that's just a given because I love this card. The art is just fantastic, by the way. I'm obsessed with this art. She's so pretty. Um, but Restoration Angel always will have a special place in my heart. Just always. Um, I love blink abilities. I love them for the sole purpose of like ET being. I love them to avoid a, um, a removal scenario. And then again, on top of that, you're left with a 3-4 flying. Or sometimes you just need to flash and sometimes you just need to blink it in so you can block with it. Like, oh, uh, this is, I think, one of my all-time favorite magic cards. I don't think I feature this in my top 10 favorite magic cards, but this is like 
in my like top 25. I'm obsessed with Restoration Angel. You will always see me running her in Modern. Um, and then I have her in my one EDH deck, so she's awesome. Um, okay, and then we have Fires of Yavimaya, which I talked about this in some video recently. I don't remember what it was. But um, I can't even tell you how many, I run this in two mini chicks. I run this in Omnoth and then I also run this in Ladies. And I can't tell you how many times I say to myself, oh, my board state is awesome, but do you know what would be more awesome if I had haste? I am like, I'm so into that. Cause like a lot of times, you know, say you establish your super sweet board, but then someone board wipes and you're like, damn, that sucks. I wish I would have gotten like some points of damage. And like, that is my mentality. And like, that's how I think. So I just love a card like Fires of Yavi Maya. There's a ton of cards, a ton of like red cards that give your, I mean, there's other cards that give haste and stuff like that too, but I really love this card. I don't find myself using it for the sacrificing um, effect, but I'm just a huge fan of this card. Sometimes you need that sack for like your commander and you're like, hey, you know, make my 5-5 five, five commander a 7-7 seven, seven, and that's extra points of commander so you can kill your opponent sooner with commander damage or, you know, it's just really good for the haste ability. So I love this card. Okay. Um, then we have a card that I don't, I feel like I haven't talked about this card recently, and that is Staff of Nin. I call this Staff of Win, uh, because seriously, it's just so good. Okay, it's, it's kind of a lot of mana, to be completely honest. It's a lot of mana because it's like six mana, and you just get to like draw an extra card. Like, very basic, but you also get to like ping stuff. And this is like so relevant, like, if, I've had times where I've just like had Staff of Nin on the board, and I'm just like, ping ya. Pena, Pena, and it's chilled for like 10 turns, and that's like 10 points of damage. Like, that is so important. Staff of Nin is definitely a card that I find myself incorporating into a lot of my EDH decks. Um, again, really good for, you know, if you're running colors and you're not super happy with a lot of like card draw effects, this is a really one good one to keep in place, and it just pings your opponent for points of damage, or sometimes you just need to kill like your opponents making one ones and you just bolt them. Like I've been in situations where like someone's had like four flying one ones from um what's the the colorless thing that um that's really really good and then when it dies you make those thopters one ones that card that card's great. Um and I can't think of the name of it right now but pinging those those flying like if you can't get around flying you know and your opponent's swing at you for like four points of damage four turns you can kill those off things like that um love this card huge fan okay this is another card i mentioned in my ladies but that is afara god of the polis or police as i call her um afara is awesome she's definitely one of my favorite card advantage type of things and she's just also an awesome lady and she's just a really great magic card like i find myself and i, I talked about this one talked about my ladies deck like sometimes uh, I'll be tutoring and like let me know if you guys are in the same boat but like a lot of times when I'm like sort of sifting through my deck I have no idea what to grab I'm like at a loss because I'm like I have so many cool things which that's awesome like that's a great place to be it's rather than that be like wow everything's awful I don't know what to get like you know I don't have this situation which is awesome but I have I really tough situations where I'm like I don't know what to get and sometimes I'm like I want card advantage but sometimes I'm like, I don't want like treasure cruise or dig through time because like those cards I cast and they go away and whatever. But Afara just chills. She's so hard to remove because she's got indestructible. I have found that to be so useful in so many situations. Someone blows up the board, destroys all creatures. Hey, guess what? Afara doesn't, you know, die because one, she's usually not a creature, but this is just my situation. She's usually not a creature. Um, even though in my opinion, it's super easy to get devotion in EDH, I, I don't think it's a really big issue. I mean, I'm running five color and I, I, I mean, it can, but I'm also not avidly going out of my way to, um, to do that. Um, but yeah, she's so sweet. And beginning of upkeep, um, by the way, it says each upkeep, just note, it doesn't say, um, one upkeep or another. So any upkeep, you get the opportunity to, um, um, to draw a card, which is awesome. So it's really good in multi like multiple games of EDH where you're having creatures enter the battlefield. Really fantastic. Um, huge fan of this card. Okay, um, the next card, I'm, I'm kind of cheating a little bit, I'm talking about two cards in one, um, but that is the Pestermite Splinter Twin combo. Um, I do run this in ladies, and I have to just say from, from my perspective, I am not someone who infinite combos, like, okay, there's some people in EDH where I have this stuck in my ladies, like I said, and um, there have been times where I've had Pestermite in my hand, and I have had so many opportunities where I can just get Splinter Twin and kill my opponent. It's been, it happens a lot. Um, and I will say that I, I don't do that. 
frequently. I have the combo in as like a safeguard. It's like a security blanket. If I need to do it, I need to do it kind of thing. It's the only infinite combo. I don't have any other like infinite combos in any of my decks ever. That's just not to me very fun. It's not something I like to do. I could easily run like Dead Eye Navigator plus anything and in, in, in Tasker could easily purchase those cards, but I'm, I'm not, you know, like that. This is just mainly a security blanket, but um, really after running these cards, I really do like having that that infinite combo at my fingertips if I'm in a situation where I know if I don't cast those, I'm going to die next turn. That's the, the means I would try to usually cast those cards. Um, but I totally understand why people want to do this in Modern because it is a ton of fun. It's very satisfying casting these cards and um, I'm, I'm a huge fan. I'm really glad that I put this combo in the deck. i really glad I had the opportunity to play with them so it's a ton of fun. Love this little combo, it's great. Okay, uh, the next card is, um, this card is definitely more expensive and I, I may have actually talked about this card in my um, cards that are worth the money, like EDH video where I talked about expensive cards that are totally worth it, and that is Marara's Week. Um, this is such a fantastic card. Like, you know like when you just ramp and it's like great and you're like this is awesome like I have this mana like it's awesome but then it's like what if you just like have that but then you have it like times two and your team gets plus one plus one like all around I'm not, there's really not a lot to say it's a very basic card but I'm a huge fan this is in um ladies and I think that's the only deck I have it in yeah I just have it in ladies but huge fan love this card very useful as well if you're doing like four or five three, four, five color decks because um, just makes casting things like so much easier and you know especially because when you're running that like a lot of times you're like oh I really need like double white or something like that and like Mars Week just makes that more possible. Oh, this card's awesome. I love it. Okay um, the next card is um, I, I haven't spent that much time I would say in my magic videos talking that much about my angel edh deck and the reason why is because not because i don't love that deck because i love love that deck it's a ton of fun it's mono white abyssin board wipes it's awesome i run like 10 board arts in the deck it's super sweet um but i don't talk about it that much because i don't play it that much because it is very mean because there's so much flying and a lot of times i feel like people just can't really deal with that and it's just it's pretty rude i will admit but um one angel that I, I i mean i really love i love a lot of angels there's a lot of my favorites but when i was looking through in cards i wanted to talk about um i realized i feel like i don't give enough attention or i don't really talk that much about angel of jubilation and she's awesome i mean even if you're not building an angel i mean if you're building angels in edh 100 percent you need this card it's also like three dollars um but really it's good in a lot of different types of decks because again it's a card that like stops your opponent from doing things like it does something but it's also a creature like I love cards like oh it makes me so happy so it's four mana for a three three flyer other non buck creatures you control get plus one plus one like you could have stopped there and I would have loved a card like I love that's an awesome card like getting your entire team especially if you're doing mono white because the non black part you're like cool whatever I don't care my entire team gets plus one plus one love it but then payers, players can't pay life or sack creatures to cast spells or activate abilities. Very, very powerful. They've stopped so many people from doing things. Um, it's a very death and taxi type card. And I find myself sprinkling in cards like that in my EDH decks. Not really on purpose. I just kind of like sprinkle them in, you know, random places where I see fit. And um, I'm a huge fan of this card. I The art too is just absolutely stunning and love it love it love it I'll talk to you guys about is a card that i mentioned earlier about repeating cards i try not to repeat cards this is a card i run in like every edh deck i have that's green and that is courser of crucifix um i know a lot of people favor the i can't remember the other card but it's light courser but it's like you reveal the top card in your library you can play like double lands and it's one more mana that card i also have that card too and that card's awesome but um Courser is just a super great magic card. Um, you play with the top card of the library revealed and you may play it um, if um, if it's a land. And when a land ETB is, you gain one life. Very simple card. Love the fact that it's like a 2-4 too. I don't know. Just that extra bit of defense I think is really sweet. Um, I'm just a huge fan of this card. I, I, I find myself running in every, you know, everywhere I can basically. And in modern too. Like I've done modern deck techs. And I've just thrown a courser in the sidebar, in the side, sidebar, in the sideboard. I'm never, I always mix this up. 
mix those two up. Um, but I find myself always running it really good for that little bit of extra life gain. Um, it doesn't really give you that much card advantage because it's just the top of your deck, but I also too, I'm a huge fan in, in information. I like knowing what's on top of my deck, even if my opponent knows, like, I don't care, I know, and that's what's important. So, you know, I like to know what I, what I'm drawing, what, what's going on there. So, and also too, I find at least I feel like I have so many things where I'm constantly like shuffling my deck. So I always feel like I'm changing like what's going on. So if I'm like, I don't like this card, like I, I have, I usually have some sort of way of like removing that, you know, not all the time, but like a lot of times it's like, eh, eh we don't like that card, you know, shuffle it away kind of thing. But yeah, awesome card. Love it. Um, okay. So, uh, Dead Bridge Chan is the next card. And I mentioned to you guys earlier about how, um, when I tutor, I have really hard times of figuring out what on earth you get. And this, this happens to me in Tassiger because I have a million and I know I, a lot of times it's like, okay, I don't need a board wipe. What do I get? And I find myself being really stuck. Um, Dead Bridge Chan is, is usually a card that I, you know, will reach for. And it, it's not a card that like I, I get and it means I'm going to win the game by any means because a lot of times my graveyard is just filled with like two twos and one ones, you know, for like skull climb and things like that. But um, just the fact of milling 10, that's so huge. Think about that in EDH. It's like one tenth of your deck. That's a ton of cards. It's also two in an ETV. So like if you have this card removed for any reason and you recast it, you get to do it again and mill another 10, which is like a graveyard recursion players. Oh, like I was about to say nightmare. I'm a graveyard like heaven. Like that is awesome. So, um, and then at the beginning of your upkeep, yep. You shuffle, you know, your, your cards and you pick one at random. And if it's a land, I'm sorry, if it's a creature, you put it on the battlefield. Otherwise you put it into your hand. So guys, I don't even care. Like putting a creature on the battlefield, that's awesome. But even so, just getting an extra card back, so huge. Getting back an instant or sorcery or a land or whatever it is, amazing. I can't say enough great things about Deborah Chan. Love this card. Okay, and um, second to last card we have is Player Cleansing. Love this card. I I find myself a lot of times, you know, because I'm like board wipe queen and I'm just like, okay, like what board wipe do I get? You know, what do I want? And like more often than not, I'm like, okay, creatures are need to get removed. But a lot of times I'm just like, yo, there's a planeswalker I can't deal with or there's artifacts or enchantments or whatever. I'm just like, I can't even, what do, what do I do? And then I'm like, uh, but I don't want to exile things because I don't want to exile my board. Planner Cleansing is just a super great, like, in the middle, like, type of card. It's, like, under a dollar, too. Like, you cannot go wrong. There's, like, no reason why every, like, white deck should, like, not have this card in there. Um, super in love with this card. Definitely one of my favorite board wipes. Um, should be in, like, every white EDH deck. It's awesome. Okay, the last card I want to talk about. Um, so, funny story. So, I was talking to Paul. And we were talking about cards we, we don't like, and he thinks it's funny, like a lot of the cards that, you know, I don't like. When I went to do my um, Cards I Loathe video, he was like, there's so many cards that I play. And I was like, well, what cards like do I play that you like hate? And he was like, you know what I really hate, Tracy? He's like, I hate Sheldred. And I think it's so funny because a lot of times like when, you know, when I'm playing with people, I can kind of like gauge like what cards people are like, I'll play and people be like, Ugh, like I hate that card. I'm like in in my like belief like I do some pretty cool stuff in EDH But none of my decks are just cut me off and I'm not too sure why so I don't really know what just happened there But um starting about Sheldred. So none of my decks are crazy like Oppressive or rude like yeah, I have twin combo But again, I only do that if like I have to to win kind of situation, but I, I feel like I play a lot of like decently fair cards that like, you know, I don't think anything I do is crazy outlandish, at least I don't think so. But, um, Sheldred is one card that Paul hates. And I, again, I, we're pretty fair when we play with each other. Like, there are some cards, like, he'll be looking through his deck for, like, tutoring for something. And he's like, okay, I'm not going to grab these cards because I know you hate them. Um, and, and there will be times where it's vice versa. Where, like, I'm tutoring and I'm like, I'm not going to grab Sheldred because I know you hate it. And, like, I, a lot of times, too, I, I try not to do the same thing all the time. Like, if I'm going to tutor... I try not to get the same card. A lot of times I try to like change it up and I'm like, well, I haven't really played with this card. Like, let me, you know, let me try this out kind of thing. Um, but Sheldra just continues to be one of my favorite cards in Tassiger. Um, she's definitely one of my bigger creatures. I have a lot of 
two twos and one ones. I have a lot of really small mana dorks and things like that, which listen, a couple of those, you know, pack a punch and I can totally kill someone with my one ones and that's awesome. But, um, I, Sheltred's definitely one of those, one of my bigger butts, and she also just does a lot of work. I mean, she's seven mana for a 6-6 Swamp Walk, and I think that's great. Um, and the being of Rock Keep, you return to your creature from your grave to the battlefield, which is just incredible, because, like, you don't even have to, like, recast it. It's just for free. You have, like, a six mana creature that you just get to recast for free. Like, hello, that's amazing. But really the thing that gets a lot of people is the last ability, and that's beginning of each opponent's upkeep, they sack a creature. There have been situations where it can help them, where they want creatures to go in the graveyard. Understandable, you know, that, that totally happens. But um, honestly, that ability is so detrimental because it gets around hexproof, it gets around indestructible, um, it gets around so many, you know, so many little things like that. Um, and you know what? A lot of times they just can't keep up. Like they just, you sheltered them and they just like, they lose a creature a turn. And listen, if you're playing against someone who generates tons of tokens, they're gonna be like, get rid of my token, I don't care. But you know, if you're playing against someone who has few creatures, this is a huge deal to them. Um, Sheldra just continues to be one of my favorite cards in Tassiker, and I, uh, that's saying a lot, because I have a lot of favorites on that deck, because I just, I, I love that deck so much. I'm very happy with it, but, um, yeah, guys, that was it for cards of 2017. I do want to definitely do this next year, and next year I'm really hoping to actually talk about some newer cards, because like I said, this year has been kind of stale. I haven't really purchased any magic cards. I'm going to actually purchase some soon, which is very exciting. Um, but yeah, that is it for this video. I will talk to you guys uh, next week on Tuesday's video.